Hello everyone, so I thought I would make a video today about Ichi, hepatic encephalopathy, and I may have butchered that. Uh, I have liver disease. Uh, my name is Neil. If you haven't seen my videos, I have cirrhosis of the liver. Um, I did drink for about two to two and a half years. It was heavier than I should have. I didn't drink actually a drop for 14 years prior to that. Um, there were other genetic things involved as well, but back to the point hepatic encephalopathy that is essentially where you go kind of cuckoo for cocoa puffs in the brain and you can say the liver did it just a little lame humor um anyway um i will get into that but first i will say that i want to thank everybody for following who has um i'm one away from 1300 followers and i never thought i would even hit 500 so thank you so much you guys are amazing and the feedback is just tremendous and i try to stay on top of it um last week i was pretty sick uh just a bad week throwing up constantly stuff stuff like that you know which if you have liver disease you know that there's times when everything just you don't feel like eating you get nauseous um sometimes you get sick and it just comes out out of nowhere um that was last week for me. Uh, so, but anyway, um, doing a little better now. So I thought I'd make a video being the fact that it's been about a week. So, but anyway, um, oh, also I want to thank everybody for donating to my uh, GoFundMe who has, you guys are amazing. I live on disability, um, along with liver cirrhosis, uh, which there's no cure for. I also have three hernias, which make life kind of difficult and um, luckily I was lucky enough to get disability. Um, it doesn't cover everything, but it's a blessing and I am extremely grateful to it. And, um, I know that it's a hard world that we live in and we go through these things. Everybody's got their own struggles and their own battles and their own fights. And for somebody even just to send $10, I, I think that's an, an amazing thing and it's so appreciated and from the bottom of my heart thank you to everyone um, there will be a link in the uh, in the description of this video also in my bio there's a link for the GoFundMe if anybody wants to help but that's not why I make these videos I really am hoping to help somebody to reach them uh, I noticed uh, I, I've noticed that there's not a lot of people talking about liver disease on this app. Um, there's information, but normally it's from doctors. It's not from the people who have gone through it. Um, there's only one other person that I've seen so far other than me who makes these kind of videos. Um, so, but um, anyway, uh, hepatic encephalopathy, what is it? Well, as you may know, your liver does many functions. Um, it's one of the most vital organs in your body. One of the things it does is it filters out the toxins, the bilirubins, the ammonia in your body and flushes them out. Um, and if you don't know how they flush out, you might want to go back to anatomy. Sorry, lame, lame humor. <laughs> anyway, kind of makes videos entertaining somehow, right? Anyway, um... So your body takes these chemicals and they filter them so they don't hurt your body. Well, these chemicals are poisons. Uh, ammonia can do a lot to your body. If you've ever seen anybody with that yellow hue to their skin and their eyes, that's the bilirubins. You have these bile ducts that you sweat from and stuff that come out to your body. And your liver is supposed to filter the bilirubins, which is the bad stuff. And when your liver goes bad, it has a hard time filtering those. So they can affect things color your skin, color your eyes. Um, it can also affect your brain, which is the HE, the hepatic encephalopathy. Um, basically what happens is that ammonia gets to your brain and actually causes you to get mood swings. Um, you may forget words, slur your words, um, forget who you are. In extreme cases, go into a coma. And a lot of times, once you're to that point, there may not be a lot of coming back for you from you. Um, so we try really hard to avoid that, and they do that with two drugs. Um, 
one of them is lactulose, which if you have liver disease, you've probably been through that and know it's the nastiest stuff ever. Um, but it is a must. It Basically, the way lactose works, it's a laxative syrup. And it's extremely sticky and sweet. Like drinking a giant cup full of sugar syrup. I mean, it gives me the full body shivers every time I drink it. But anyway, what happens is, because it's so thick, it binds to those ammonia particles in your body and traps them so that you can expel them out through your bowels. Um, I know no one wants to talk about that, but that's how it gets out. Uh, so I take this two times a day. Um, depending on your severity, they may have you on once a day, twice a day. Um, 30 milligrams, 60 milligrams, it all depends on what your doctor decides is the best choice of action for you. And then the other one is a pill called Zyfaxin. Zyfaxin is like an antibiotic that is like a super armor. Um, it's extremely expensive too. And if you don't have insurance, it might make it difficult. I did, I luckily I've had insurance, but I do know that there are some programs um, if you look up the maker of the drug where they can cover some of that um, copay for you or at least bring that price down. But without insurance, that's like a $3,000 a month medicine. It's crazy. I mean, it's $150 a pill. That's insane. I mean, that's a whole other story <laughs> where they get off charging so much for these pills. And a lot of pharmacies may have to order it in. Um, I use a Walmart because uh, it's the closest one to me, and now they stock it because I get it every month, but prior, I used to have to wait for them. Um, you might even be able to get on a program where they ship it to you. It makes life a little easier. Um, you'd have to check with your insurance and also uh, those things um, for that situation. But this drug, um, it's twice a day, and basically it puts a shield around your brain and helps protect your brain from getting poisoned by... The ammonia. Um, I have experienced this uh, not to an extreme point to the point where my mood swings like I would go into depression or I'd be very angry and it's a weird feeling because you're angry your emotion says you're angry but your mind says you're not so it's almost like two people in one uh, sometimes I'll be explaining something and I will totally forget what I was talking about um, some people say that happens to them just from age, I, I guess. Um, I have an excuse, though. <laughs> and if you got liver disease, you have an excuse, too. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, you, you, you may forget names, words, uh, spellings, phone numbers, simple things like that that you're, you know, used to. Um, or even blacking out, like, uh, blocks where you don't remember um, you know, it's like you were driving, you know, you went through that intersection, but you don't remember going through it. Uh, it's a weird feeling. Um, so, or in other situations, like, did I put that ingredient in or, you know, what have you? Um, it can also get to the point where it can make you violent. And that's never happened to me. I've always been able to control it to the point where I wasn't violent or, or physical with it. But I, I do know that it can. Um, people have been known to do some crazy things while being affected by hepatic encephalopathy, um, things that they wouldn't normally do. Uh, uh, when I first got liver disease, I didn't realize I had it and I kind of checked out for two years, um, mentally. I mean, I went into the worst depression I've ever been in and, and I didn't know it then, but knowing it now, a lot of that had to do with the hepatic encephalopathy. My liver was failing, and I didn't realize it. And, um, you know, it would cause you to say things maybe you wouldn't normally do. And, and unfortunately, you've got to live with those regrets. Um, somebody might say something to you. Do you remember you said this? No, I don't. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I said that. Um, I, I mean, I've sent text messages to people and not remember sending them and been like, wow, what, what was I talking about? You know, um, I don't know if that's ever happened to any of you, but, um, it's kind of a strange feeling. Uh, but then again, on the other side of it, if you do something while you're under this control of hepatic encephalopathy, then you find out you did it later when you're normal thinking, 
it, it really affects you because, you know, you're like, I can't believe I did that or I can't believe I acted that way or I can't believe I treated somebody that way. And you have to deal with that. And, you know, somebody might tell you it's not your fault, but on a personal level, you still feel bad, you know? You still feel like you made poor decisions, you know, that you could have done something different or that's just the way the human mind works. Um, you know, we're, we tend to be our, our worst critics, um, you know, in most cases. But there's no cure for hepatic encephalopathy except for, well, liver transplant um, or healing of the liver. But once you become cirrhotic, the liver doesn't come back from that. It can go quite a while the way it is, um, limping along, um, you know, but it's not going to get better. Um, like these three hernias I have, I can't have surgery done on those until the liver gets replaced. And I'm under the threshold of where I need to be to have the liver replaced. Uh, MELD score is something um, that they use to calculate your end of life. Uh, how, excuse me, how long you have based on certain numbers, your creatine, your sodium, your bilirubins, and your INR, which is your blood clotting factor. They take those numbers and it goes from 6 to 40. Um, two years ago, well, a year and a half ago, I was at like 36. Um, so, I mean, I was in pretty bad shape. And the only reason why I was turned down for a liver transplant then is because I didn't have a support system to say, hey, I'll take care of him for six months. That is something that, that the doctors want before they do a transplant. You have to have somebody willing to step in to be your care team. And I didn't have that at the time. Um, so... I was turned down for it. Well, things started turning around. I stopped building up fluid eventually, and I was able to, you know, get some kind of even control on it. It's still difficult. Um, it's not easy knowing that today I could feel great and go out, take a nice long walk, and tomorrow I could be in the hospital because it could flip-flop that quick. Um, you know, if your body, if your liver completely stops filtering that ammonia, and then all of a sudden it all rushes to the brain, you know, it's, it's, it's a scary thing um, to live like that, to know that today's a good day. What's tomorrow? So I take every day as what it is. So I really have a hard time thinking about tomorrow. I kind of focus on today um, for that reason. Um, I try to make the best out of every day I have and just hit it with a positive attitude or as positive as you can be. Um, it's not easy, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of mental things going on in the mind. There's a lot of uh, thoughts and things like that that we think of that affect us on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when you know that you can't go and do the things you did five years ago or three years ago or two years ago or however long ago it was, you know, I'm not able to do that. I mean, I was a mechanic for years. I can't really turn a wrench anymore. I don't have the strength for it. Um, you know, I used to diagnose cars and trace down electrical shorts, and I don't think I could really do that because sitting in one place and also trying to remember those numbers and where everything went, my mind's not as quick as it used to be. Um, so, you, you know, you have to say, okay, I can't do this anymore, but what can I do? And focus on that. And that's what I try to do. Um, so, but anyway, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, this was just a basic um, overview of what hepatic encephalopathy is. Um, it definitely wasn't meant to be technical. Um, I was trying to kind of keep it simple. Um, sometimes the doctors tend to use these big words and big explanations and we're like, speak English, doc. You know, so... But uh, this is uh, what I've been through. And again, thank you for your support. Thank you, everybody, for, you know, the kind words you've said. And, and um, I look forward to hearing from all of you. And again, uh, the links for the GoFundMe is in the page description, also on my bio. If anybody wants to help, no, I don't. You're not required to. But um, that's not why I make these videos, like I said before. But it has been a huge blessing. And I thank everybody for that. And again, I hope everybody has an amazing and blessed, awesome day. Make the best out of every every minute you got and just
keep on fighting. Keep going. The only way up is up. All right. Take care, everyone.